Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Make Code Arcade Advanced Stream. I'm Richard Avershot on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Joe at Jay Wanderill on the Make Code Forum. And thank you for joining us today. We are going to continue to work on our Pikmin inspired game. Yes, of course, I am talking about your favorite political leader and mine, Bug President. There we go. All right, so if you haven't been watching, uh, we've been working on this Pikmin like game. You can see you got this adorable Bug President walking around. Uh, his eyes are still a little crazy. I still need to fix that. Um, and you can throw your little bug bugs around and they will go and uh, carry things back to base. And right now this is our little test level, so that's all there is. And the thing we're working on today is this result screen. So for this result screen, when you finish a level, we want these bugs to march across the screen with everything that you pick up. Um, like here, let me add another thing to this level. Where are you? Level. Also, apologies if you can hear breakfast in the background. He is yelling for no reason. Tea. Well, I'm sure he has. One, so. All right. So uh, we also got uh, these strawberries. Go ahead and pick that up. Carry that back. Carry those grapes. Beautiful. Um, and now you'll see that everything that we picked up, so it's going to be eight grapes and our strawberry are going to be carried across the screen. That's as far as we've gotten. So the thing that I like really have as like an idea for this is I kind of want them to all be. I want there to be a bigger bug here, um, which I've been tossing around what to call this bigger bug, because obviously we can't have them getting confused with bug president, our main character. I was thinking maybe we called him bug emperor. I don't know. Um, but anyway, imagine a big centipede like thing with like huge mandibles. And then when they come over, they toss their offering over and then it gets crunched and kind of explodes into pixels and the score goes up, mm -hmm. you know. Are there, when there are emperors, are there have there ever been presidents in the same? Because um, like they're typically my understanding is it's like emperors and then you might have like kings or dukes or something like that below if you're having an aggregate of kingdoms. Uh, Japan has an emperor and a prime minister. Oh, you're true. Right. Yeah, and I mean, you can do a lot more fantasy story and uh, novel research, I think, to understand the real core of this. I need to read like 18 Isekai novels and then I'll know everything there is to know. Yes, Unsigned Arduino is, of course, putting in the the, the work and saying um, could also be its ex or emperor president. Like I said, I mean, a president is the same thing as a prime minister, right? Yeah. And Japan does have an emperor and a prime minister. Yeah. Ah, it's all made up anyway. Who cares? It's all words. <laughs> yeah. Um, We're just giving some weird no uh, noise of some mean. Who cares? Mm -hmm. All right. Well, anyway, let's just figure out the rest of this. So we're not going to do that little bug emperor guy over here on the right, because I have plans for that. You can see I actually started coding this 10 minutes before stream started um, uh, here. Um, I'm going to I'm going to do this one in Java, JavaScript just because it's going to be easier to do that way. But the idea is that he's going to have these big mandibles right here. You can see this is buggy right now. And they're going to like chop, 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 you know? Um, but I need to fix this rotation code so that it is doing the origin correctly. You can see that every 180 degrees is getting messed up right now. And I just got to work it out a bit of paper. So I'm not going to make you watch me do that on stream. I'll do it later. Yeah. Um, How big of an issue is that really, though? Because it is like the emperor is just going to stay in one space and like open and close, right? Do we actually run into the issue? I think you do. I don't know where the plane okay. of the 180 degrees is. Oh, because it is. Gotcha. <laughs> that, that probably that might matter. Yes. Could could theoretically craft an image that doesn't. But also, it should be easy for me to figure this out. I really just need to. It's just numbers, man. It's it's. I, I need to get some graph paper and just work it out. And I'm sure it'll be very obvious once I sit down with it. I just did. I didn't put enough time before stream today. All right. So anyway. Let's go to our end round function, which is right here. So you can see we've been keeping track of all of the items we collected inside of this round collected items. And we're going through here and we're saying, um, if it's a grape, bring out this. If it's a berry, we bring out this. These don't actually, like I think Joey pointed out, our scale is terrible in that these are not actually grape sized if we're talking about bug president, because that means bug president is basically the size of a tennis ball. But uh, I mean, it, that is justifiable, I think. It is the president. Hmm. It's just like this is 
obviously a bug from Australia. That's where the bug comes from. And then it makes sense. Bug president is exists outside of country. All right. He's okay. just, yeah. Because okay. the bug emperor took over all countries. <laughs> I got you. All right. Um, so with this, let's go ahead and uh, do the other part of this. So we are talking about, um, here's our little tile map that we're using for this animation. And all of our things are starting over here and then going over to this one um, right now. That's about as far as we've gotten. Um, and actually, I'm going to move this over because there's like a, a delay right now before when we start seeing them and when it actually goes over. And so I want them to just be like right off screen because our screen is centered around this center part. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to have them going to the right um, until they get to a certain point. Then they're going to toss the thing, which we will have explode, and then they're going to run back. Um, and we'll just keep doing this, and our score will tick up. So we could certainly do the rest of that right now, the tossing, the tick up, and all of that good stuff. Um, OK, so um, to do that, uh, we are creating sprites for each of these guys called parade grower with the parade grower kind. Um, and so we're going to handle this inside of an on-game update. So on-game updates, of course, they run every uh, frame in your game. And so in here, we're just going to be looping over all of our parade goer sprites and seeing, are you past the halfway point? If you are, then we're going to have you stop, throw the thing, and start going to the left instead. So let's do inside of loops. I want a four of loop. Not that one. That one. Um, inside of sprites, I want the array of all sprites of kind. There we go. Make this parade goer. And um, we want to find out if we're halfway through the screen. Now, uh, we are scrolled over again in this tile map. So we're actually going to use the camera left so that we can figure this out. So we're going to go in here, grab the camera, this guy. Or I guess camera X is the center, right? Yes. Yeah, so I can just use that. All right, so let's grab the X. We're going to do a comparison. Grab our value variable. And see, are we greater than or equal to the camera X? And if we are, then we are going to set our velocity well actually um let's talk about this because so right now the way we're doing this when we create our initial sprites we're just putting the bugs inside of our um sprite right um which is nice for simple coding, but it does mean that if we're going to have it throw the thing, we really do need it to be separate. Yeah. So and we can't have them like march and carry it as a group in aggregate. Yeah. So um, we can do this the hacky way or the easy way. Sorry, the hacky way or the, or, or the good hard way. That's what I mean. How hard is it with uh, since we do already have the the like moving stuff back home logic. How hard would it be to? What's the challenge, I guess, I'm thinking of? Um, I, I just don't want to confuse all of that code. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm going to just... end up making a change to that code, and then it's going to break this later or something like that, or you know, vice versa. Makes sense. Um, um, also, hi, Lucas, um, who has a new Twitch username, um, and they say hacker jam. Yes. So. Um, forgot to mention at the top of stream, um, we do mini game jams first Monday of every month. I completely failed in posting the mini game jam this month because I was dying. Um, but uh, luckily, I, I mean, I'm, I'm fine, but I had a very bad cold. Um, but Lucas, in my stead, went and started his own mini game jam, and we have made it the official mini game jam. So the hacker mini game jam, you will have an extra week to submit your games. Please go ahead and do that. I might try to do a. Um, game for this one because it sounds fun mm -hmm. um, it is kind of more uh, appealing when it's not us hosting it yeah uh, so uh you, you you can find about out about that on the, on the form um as we said yeah on monday uh lucas has been 
temporarily deputized for this mini game jam. Um, wait, Lucas, you're here now. One second, let me go grab my sword. What? There we go. Okay. Now you're officially deputized. Oh right, I forgot. Yes. Yeah. So Joey's doing prop work. Yes. Um. Uh, also, is it more danger, Kitty? Is that the pronunciation or more more danger? I think so. Kitty. Or, I don't know. All right, so, okay, here's the hacky way to do this. Of uh, Also, hi, Kiwi Fix. Um, so, we have a, oh, I see, Lucas M or Danger Kitty. That makes sense. Okay, I, I, I put my preferred pronunciation, but I'll go with Danger Kitty. That's good. All right, um, so the hacky way I'm planning on doing this, we have the bugs at the bottom of the image, Joey. So what we could do is create a new image with the top of this image and then fill it with transparency except for the bottom row. And I mean, we don't even need to do that, right? We uh, we just need to duplicate the image and then, you know, fill rectangle on one, fill rectangle on the other, and then we're good to go. Correct. Yes. OK, Perfect. we're doing it this way. Don't don't be like us, OK? D yeah. When you're writing code, you know, write code that's like, Nice, yeah. not terrible like we are about to do. Yeah, I think I think combining with the following logic would be fine if we were doing this in a more rigorous way. It's just we're doing this hacky way because we don't want to get stuck in refactoring heck forever. Exactly, yes. We have a lot of code in this game already, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do this nice hacky way that's going to be self-contained. Um, so let's get into specifics of what we're doing. So we're creating a new sprite that is a clone, has the cloned image of our um, other sprite. And we're just going to call this one um, what kind here? And I'll just do a thrown item. I don't actually know if we're going to use this kind anywhere, but I might as well give it a unique kind so I don't mess any other code up. Um, now I'm going to take this cloned image and we want to get rid of the bugs that are holding it. The bugs are on the bottom row of the image. So we can simply, or you know, actually there's an even easier way to do this. Uh, we're just going to get rid of all of the green pixels and change them to transparency in the temp sprite image. Um, and now for our other one, we are going to, inside of images, we're going to do fill rectangle. We're going to be doing this for our value image. So let's grab that. Yeah, so we just have to remember that none of them can have a, the same green as a highlight or anything. Yeah, I don't think I would do that anyway, <coughs> which is why I was okay with doing it. Yeah. Um, all right, and we're going to do the value width. That's a beautiful first time chat right there, Professor Brett, I gotta say. Uh, surely this decision won't come back to haunt me in the future. It did, the narrator. Yeah, it has uh, plenty of times. And just fill that with transparency. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the velocity of this guy, our value, and we're going to negate it. You know, actually, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to straight up negate it. So do set value by, not by, bx, to 0 minus value bx. Beautiful, negated. Um, and uh, the last thing we have to do is we need to take our fruit or whatever and um, set it so it's at the same position. So let's do grab our temp sprite. And we want to set its position to be the same as the value x, value y. So that it looks natural when we throw it. All right. Um, and let's just test this out for now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Get to our end screen. One. Good. 
Yeah, okay, so they're heading over. And yeah, there we go. You can see they are placing the things down and then going back, which is exactly what we wanted them to do. So perfect. <coughs> All right. Um, now we want them to do, we want to throw them. So the way we're going to throw them is just using um, a straight up animation. Um, so inside of animation, remember we have these path animations, which we can use to do movement. And um, these, we have a bunch of presets, but we're actually going to be using, we're just going to make our own. And if, if you're wondering how to make your own, you can just put a string in here. And this uses the same syntax as SVG paths. We cannot value. Oh, tips mm -hmm. right. Um, OK, so this what I'm going to be typing right now is going to seem like a bunch of nonsense. And I mean, it kind of is. But um, yeah, all right. So we're going to do a quadratic operator. So that is lowercase q. The first thing that we're going to put into this is the um, uh, control point. And this is going to be used to determine uh, what direction our curve goes in, basically. Um, so I want this to be kind of in the center of where I want this thing to land. Um, and oh, I should probably be using a text join for this because we're going to be putting some stuff in here. Um, so uh, I'm going to put in, uh, let's say we want to throw it 100 pixels. Actually, you know what? I don't need a text join, do I? Because this is all relative. All right, undo, undo, undo. Thank you. There we go. All right, so we're going to throw it. Uh, 100 pixels is actually a lot. Let's throw it uh, 80, 70 pixels. So we're going to put this at Y 35. Now for, I'm sorry, at X 35. Now for the Y, we want to do negative some amount. So the more we do it, the higher it's going to bounce. So let's just do negative 20 for now. I have no idea if that's good or not. Um, next, we want our final X position, position which is going to be 70. Um, and then our final Y position, which is zero, we want it to be back at the original Y. Um, and uh, yeah, all right, let's try that out. If you're around near high school, you might notice quadratic is quadratic equation. It's the same thing. It is the same thing. I don't know why I said pretty much. I was just couching it unnecessarily. Right. Throw, throw, oh. throw, 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 throw. Actually, that, that is pretty good. Yeah. Um, probably just shorten it a bit. We'll do 60, change this to 30. And then, of course, we want the time to be less. So let's just do one second, so twice as fast. Mm -hmm. um, all right, that's great. Um, and what we're going to do now is we want this thing to get destroyed after a second. Um, and like I said, we kind of want it to like explode. And this is going to look like nonsense until we do. Uh, so the first thing. number is A, second is B, third is C. So uh, this this equation, if you you can look up the SCG syntax for more uh, details on it, but it's just Q means quadratic starting at current location. Uh, the 30 negative 20 is the pair X, Y for the, the control point, which is the part at the peak of the curve is how I would think of it. And then the 60, 0 is the point at the very end, and it's relative to the current one. So it's going uh, halfway at the halfway mark. It'll be up 20. And then at the end, it'll be down back to where it currently is. Yeah, uh, there we go. This is all you need. Yeah, so um, thank you, MDN. Um, so when you're doing a quadratic, this is actually a quadratic Bezier curve. Um, so you basically have your starting point, which because we're using lowercase q, we don't need to specify. Um, or I guess you never need to specify, do you? Um, you have your starting point, which is wherever just the path point currently is. Then you have the control point, um, and then you have the uh, final point, which is where you want to go. So the first two um, arguments, the dx1, dy1, that is the specification of this control point. And then the dx, dy is this final point. Um, and you can, it doesn't need to be perfectly in the center like it is here and like it is in ours. You can move like skew it over here and then you'll kind of go like, ooh, you know, 
like more skewed to the left. But because we want this to mimic a, a, a throw, and those are pretty parabolic, we do want it to be in the in the center here. So that's the idea. Uh, uh, yeah. Anyway, and SVG path animations in Arcade are like a superpower. So if you have not done this before, I highly recommend going through the S the MDN SVG tutorial on paths and using them because you can use them for all sorts of stuff in arcade games. Do we ignore commas? I forgot that, that was supported in the syntax. Uh, we might want. If we don't, we should. Uh, but commas? Do you, yeah. Do we ignore? Yeah, them? I don't. I don't. I don't know. I I okay. did make it very much more tolerant in the past. Let me put a comment in here and see what happens. Um, and the important bit to note that we kind of glossed over, lowercase q and uppercase q, totally different. Lowercase is relative to your current location, where uppercase is just like the screen location, right? It's yeah. like 30 pixels versus uh, uh, v like dx. It's relative versus absolute. Um, and yes, commas work fine. I, I okay. thought I would handle all that stuff. All right. Um, OK. So that's working. Um, we're going to go ahead and make this thing. Let's see, there should be a make code tutorial on those paths, LOL. Oh, gosh. Maybe. Joe, you're muted. That could be kind of fun. Maybe we could make like a turtle that, uh, that follow that does it using the paths. Yeah. So sure. it just draws a line below you as a separate extension. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, OK, so with that, nifty, um, we're going to go ahead now and make it explode. So there's two ways I can think of doing this. Um, I think we're just going to give it a lifespan. Lifespan then fire. Oh, wait. So, something like that. Yeah, don't, don't worry. I got a plan. Um, so we're going to go to temp sprite here, grab, it a, grab the lifespan and put in a thousand. So lifespan is in milliseconds, and after this amount of time, it will just automatically get destroyed. So having it with this path will just automatically destroy it after their path is completed. So after a second. Um, so when it gets destroyed, luckily we gave it its own unique time kind, this thrown item. We're going to go ahead and grab an on destroyed event right here and change this to be thrown item. And um, what I'm going to do now is create yet another sprite. And this one is just going to be decoration. And we're going to grab the image from our sprite that has been destroyed. So this one right here, the image still exists, so it's fine. Um, we're going to set it at the same location. I just did this. Go. So there we go. And now we'll look like our sprite was not destroyed because we've just created a new one with the exact same image in the exact same spot. We're going to destroy it though immediately. Uh, so we're just going to call destroy on this new one. If and anybody's looking at this thinking, this is really weird. Why are you doing it this way? It's just because we don't have a way to set a uh, effect to run when lifespan runs out. Pretty much, yep. Uh, and I'm going to do disintegrate because if we're having someone eat this thing, I think it makes sense. Do it is perfect trip. because you do get crumbs. Yeah. So you will see them throw them and then and they like explode into little pixels and then they get destroyed. All right, so we'll just leave it there for now. But imagine in the future there will be a big bug over there eating them and chopping on them. Cam993 says, sorry I'm late. My bus was late, uh, but hi, hi. And uh, you know, no words. Just drop in whenever. Sorry your bus was late, but yeah, you never have to worry. You can always catch us on the, the VOD too if you uh, want or not. All right, beautiful. OK, so um, last thing we want to do, I think, is um, we need to increment this score. 
So whenever we uh, get to this point where we throw the thing, we're going to go ahead and take the score and add to it. And the score is going to be added based on whatever it is they are carrying. So uh, to make that happen, I think we'll just store the score on the sprite. So I'm going to grab set data to number. There we go. And because this is all based off weight, why is it not giving me the thing? Oh, I'm using string. That's nice. That's wrong. Here we go. Uh, Ham93 says, can you share it at the end of stream, please? Yeah, absolutely. If you have the previous link, it should still work probably. Yeah. yeah but Thanks either so. way. Actually, I can probably just grab that stream and share it right now. Yeah, if you grab the um, the persistent share link, the one with the S in it, um, I update it at the end of every stream, so that will always have the most recent code. All right, so we're going to set the weight to one for these guys and to eight for these guys. Like that. And now head on over to our on-game update right here. And um, oh, let's see. I created a variable for this. Where is it? Create score text. Oh, I guess I need to. So I have this parade score text. Which is that zero that's appearing in the middle of the screen. Uh, we also just need a variable that is the current score. So let's have a zero. And we're going to change this and then set the text of this to be whatever that is. All right. <clears throat> so go ahead and change parade score by grab this value, get that number we just stored. Wait. And then we're going to take uh, use the fancy text and set our parade score text. To the text for this guy. Join. Get parade score. There we go. And we're going to set its X. We want to make sure it stays centered. So we're going to set the X back to 80 and we're going to set the Y back to, I think it's at 20. Um, and all right, so let's check that out. We're going to go ahead and throw these guys. Also, I'm noticing a bug where the uh, the fraction is appearing in the wrong place and then popping over for just like a frame. Mm -hmm. right, there it goes. So you see the thing going up? That's good. It should go up by eight now. 16. Cool. Uh, do we want a little thing that says plus something that kind of goes away to make it clear what each one's worth? I think I do, yeah. Yeah, all right, we'll do that. Um, are you thinking like uh, plus eight pops in and then like scrolls down and, and dot with a like transparency or something? I wasn't planning on doing anything that fancy. Okay. Um, I was just going to have like plus one appear. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see, Lucas shared a game. Um, so, uh, Lucas, do you want us to play that on stream or do you want to keep it a secret until the, the game jam? Please let me know. Yeah, I mean, I can delete your post and just look at it if you want. Uh, but OK, I'll put it in the chat and we can look at it at the end. All right, yeah, we'll, we'll play it at the end. OK. <laughs> so uh, with that, we got this going up. We're going to go ahead and create that little score. Um, so to do that, uh, we're going to be just creating a new fancy text, right? Right here, we'll grab a uh, See. We're going to use the join here and then do plus. 
can grab our weight right here. Um, and then we will, we don't need max width. We do want to set the color. Um, we'll just use the same white, I guess. And then I figure we'll use the small font for this. Um, all right, now there is the question of where do we put it? So Joey was mentioning that one thing we might want to do is um, have them all just kind of moving down, which, you know what, actually that's really easy to do, isn't it? Um, uh, just otherwise, since they go in so fast, it, it feels like it might just like flash too fast and you wouldn't actually be able to read it when it's going between a couple different. Yeah. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to set this guy to be at the same position as our sprite that's throwing the thing. Or I guess go up since there's less. Or is a vertical space. I, I was going to make them go down because. We don't have anything going on down there. Oh, either way. And either way. Works. Uh, we're going to set ghost on on this guy. Ghost, you never seen us use it before, makes it so that it ignores walls, so it'll just go off screen, which we want to do because we're also going to turn on auto destroy, which destroys things when they go off screen. So we don't have to worry about getting rid of these guys, they'll just go away automatically. And we just give them a velocity. Set the VX to zero, set the VY to 70, I don't know. And uh, yeah. Try that out. I got to fix that fraction thing. Got to remember. Oh, that's interesting. You uh, picked them up while they were. Yeah, eating, so it didn't go back down. Oh, yeah. Maybe going a little too fast on that. Pull that down to like 50. Um, they're about halfway a screen, so that's like a second and a half you get to read it almost. Yeah. Right. I guess a second and a fifth. Do we like that being in the center of the screen or do we want it to be somewhere else? What do you think? When I was saying going up, I was thinking of it as right to the right of the 16 or up to the of the number. Oh, I see. Um, you want to was... put it up there and then have it go up. Yes, that's what I was uh, envisioning it as. I didn't realize it was right next to it. Um, I think either way is fine. I th it looks pretty good to me as it is. Um, all right, well, we can do that, actually. Let's give it a shot at least. Um, so we're going to set the X to be camera X. Plus, I don't know, 20. And we want the Y to be the same Y as our score, which is 20. And we will change this VY to be negative. And uh, see how that looks. We really need to do the thing where if it's close to the thing, it just grabs it anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, we'll push it down a few pixels. We'll push it to the right a few pixels and we'll push it down a few pixels. So let's make this 24. And um, we'll make, I'm oh, sorry, we'll make this 24. And then we want the Y to be, yeah, well, 24 is probably fine. Uh, try that. And just remember in your mind that there is a gaping maw absorbing and digesting all of these uh, fruits. There will be in the future yeah. when we write that code. Or like keys or anything. If, even if it's not fruits, it's going to eat anything. All right. Now, with that, 
we get into the final part of this parade. So we have a total max score we can have, right? Which for this one is 16. We're just, we've just been getting the max score every time. Um, but we want to award a medal based off of how well you do. So we're going to do it based off percentages, but um, we want to give you either a gold, silver, bronze, or platinum, which is the perfect medal. Um, and were we counting anything for score? I forget. Or were we wanting to? Not we aren't. Uh, for time, not score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you get perfect, we will add the time remaining time to your score. We actually have already stored that in a variable somewhere. Um, so we will we will count that as well. Um, OK, now I'm thinking we just go easy with this and just write gold medal or something at the bottom. Sure. We could also have it get carried in as the last item. Yeah, we could do something like that too, but I think it's good to have some text. Um, yeah, it's easier to tell gold versus bronze if it is written out versus just shown. That's my main main worry. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, let's go ahead. We're going to first we need to detect when we are done. So um, let's see. The Unica says this game is definitely a certified hood classic. Okay. Glad to hear it. I agree. Sure. It, it is up there with the. Um, is there any other part of the name besides Hamlet? I'm forgetting. I think it's just Hamlet. I yeah. think it's just Hamlet. It's up there with Hamlet in my mind. No one will ever reach stable table again, though. That was yeah. magic. That's a once in a lifetime game. To clarify, our Hamlet. I, I guess I should clarify that. Just but not the Hamlet. Yeah. Maybe the Hamlet too, but our Hamlet. All right, back to what we were doing. Um, so we need to know when we've thrown all of these things. Um, and the way we're going to do that is uh, we have these sprites, right, that we are doing. Um, let's see, we have Parade Goer, right? Uh, so I'm going to change the kind of these guys when we uh, have them get to the right. Um, And we're just gonna count how many parade goers are. No, that won't work. Will that work? No, that won't work. Maybe it'll um, work. I don't think it'll work. Um, okay, what do we want to do instead? All right, we'll just store another variable. I was like, can we do this without creating another variable? But now nah, we're gonna have to. Um, all right, so we're going to do collected Games, items. Countdown puzzle game where you can put certain commands, hacks that change. That sounds like a cool game, Kiwi Phoenix. Good to get it down to the minimum number of hacks. All right, uh, so we're just going to change this parade collect items by one. And we'll just check to see if this is the same length, is same as the length of our collected items array. And if it is, then we know we're done. Um, oh, did I zero this out, by the way? No, I did not. This will be a good idea once we eventually have multiple levels in this game. All right, so this equals the length of our array. What did I call that array? Round collected items. Oh, this isn't confusing at all. Um, all right, so if they equal each other, that means we have thrown everything. So we're going to go ahead and um, yeah, this should be fine. So we're going to go ahead and um, create a sprite that's going to tell you what metal you got. Uh, so let's go to fancy text. Going to make an yet another variable. Just having so many variables today. 
uh, parade underscore uh, metal hex. And here we need to figure out what metal they got. Um, so what do you think good thresholds are, Joey? Sixty, eighty, ninety. Yeah. Okay, that's another. I, right I don't think we want to necessarily get to a hundred percent for gold. That feels no. A hundred percent is platinum. Oh, um, true. Yeah. So, uh, we have a parade score variable, right? And we also have a. Where was that round? Round top score variable right here. Um, and you know what? I think I'm actually realizing right now I need to save this variable because we're changing it inside of our onloaded tile map event. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to change this when we call our end around function. I mean, save it. So I'll do that right now. So we're going to make yet another variable because we don't have enough. Look at this. Look at this mess. All right, next hackathon, I'm going to do variable folders. Ooh. Um, and it's a feature that is just for me. Um, okay. Permanent experiment? Yeah. All right. Parade uh, top score. And we are just going to set this equal to our round top square. There we go. All right. So if our parade score equals our parade top score, then you've gotten the coveted platinum medal. Mm -hmm. I know. There's a warranted gasp. I don't think we have room to write platinum metal. I think it's fine. Eh, it's cool enough. All right. <clears throat> now, if we are above 90%, so if parade score is greater than parade type top score times zero point nine, then we're gonna do gold. Greater than equals. I feel like. sure. That's the most fiddly thing, but yeah, mine is heartbreaking to get a 90 and not get a gold. OK, we did. We were doing 90 and then 80, then 60 is what we said. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. This one will be silver. Try again. All right. It's going to be a restart button. Um, it comes across the screen. I mean, it's going to have a restart thing either way, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it is essentially you lost if this happens. So if you didn't even get a bronze medal. So yeah, makes sense. All right. Um, with that, we can go ahead and try this out. Oh, wait, I didn't set the position of this guy. OK, don't try this out yet. Do, do, do. All right, so first I want to set the relative to camera on because we don't want this guy to. Um, we want it to just be stuck to the screen. that and then we're going to set its position 
to be halfway through the screen, which is 80. And then we did 20 pixels from the top for the score. So we'll do 20 pixels from the bottom because we're kind of symmetric, um, which will be 120 minus 20 is 100. All right. Go. Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, sixteen. Platinum. Hmm. And I was correct. We definitely cannot write platinum metal. It's definitely not going to fit. We could put it in smaller text underneath. Yeah. Um. Okay. Wait. Actually, you know what we need to do for this? Oh. Perfect. This is what I was about to say, Rainbow, you did it. Yep. Uh, uh, I'm sure you handled it. Yeah, so this is a fancy text extension. Oh, oh, it's uh, not matched up, right? Yeah, I think that'll actually work just fine, but I will go ahead and fix it. All right. Yeah. Um, it's interesting that it does include. Includes the, the background colors. color, which uh, actually we might have to turn this off because it's. It just looks really. It's, it's, aggressive. it's aggressive. It looks very broken right now, I would say. Um, OK, we're going to turn off. Oh, OK, I was I was expecting you to look better when I looked in the stream. But no, it's, a, it's about the same as what I've seen. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty bad because it's using the background color. Mm. As part of it, so. Justin. We'll leave Wavy though. All right, cool. OK, so that's neat. Um, the last thing we need to do is actually end it. And then, I don't know, I guess we need to go to some level select screen or something. Um, yeah. I guess we'll leave that for when the level select screen is. Uh, and yes, Lucas, thank you for reminding me. Um, let's go ahead and play your game, man. Um, because 10 minutes from the end of stream is the correct time. Yeah. All right. Hi, Hi tester. tester. Welcome to Welcome. the demo. Welcome to the demo. Whoa. Oh, whoa, okay. whoa, whoa. All right, so if you press V, you go into this like, Hacker alternate mode. thing yeah. and everything freezes which is pretty hacker cool. bats take function <laughs> move x give function move x oh this That's is cool. pretty sick lucas i have to say yeah what was the game that was like the uh this is like watchdogs i think Nah, that one wasn't as uh, minutia controllable, but no, yeah, it was really fun. All right, so let's talk about what's happening here. So all of these guys have different behaviors, right? So like this guy had move in the X direction, the other one had move in the Y direction, and have, they both had bounce. So what I did was I took away his move X behavior, so he's not moving anymore, and then I gave it to this guy, so he is now moving in both the X and Y, and then doing that, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I can think of a lot of fun things you can do for that. Yeah. What? All right, is that uh, it? This, for the... this S link has a lot of fives in it. Like half oh, us. Yeah. Um, OK, I think. Is that is that all that's in the demo, Lucas? Let me know. Super cool, by the way. It is super cool, yeah. Um, all right, we have another game from Ham993. Yes, password. Let's do it. Um, all right, we can set the password to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Very secure Read password. Speak alpha is the is a good next one. 
or or yak or make code is cool. I think we have to choose that one. Show opponent. It's a demo. I'm still working on it. Pro yeah, that's that's great. It, it it's a very cool demo. I like the demo a lot. Interesting. Wait. Okay. Wait. I'm not sure if I get this game. Ham 903. You might have to give me some info. I am going to look at the code though. See if I can suss it out. I don't know why that didn't work. Nice. All right. Let's Maybe see we can if we figure can this out, out together. We do have five more, uh, eight more minutes. All right. Three so we are we're using show player choices from the story extension. Choosing one of those that we can call a like password check. Let's take a look at that. If last answer equals that, then we are setting our password to whatever it is. Makes sense. Um, and then, oh, it looks like we're also setting these all to false, even though they're already false. I'm guessing these are supposed to be true. Yeah, that looks like it's supposed to be true. That might be something to to look at. I know why it didn't work now. Uh, maybe that maybe that he they had the same thought. No, no, it's supposed to be false. All right. Uh, okay, it is supposed to be false, I guess, but this isn't doing anything because it's already set to false up here. All right. So in this password check finish, we are checking to see which one they chose, and we're saying if that, then correct. If that, then correct. If that, then correct. Okay. Yeah. So this is not gonna work because this is always gonna just choose correct because. It's always setting at least one of these true. Um, so it's always going to make one of these correct. Um, so I think what you want to do here is you're setting this password. So you want to say inside here, you want to do another check, which is if password equals like that, then you set this to true and do the same thing for all three of these. Yeah. Uh, you might also be able to get away with if last answer equals password, but I, I had to open it up to. Oh, yeah, that actually would sense. work just fine, I think. So you could just I think we cut out some of the variables with that. Yeah. So Joey's right. You could just do this because you're setting the password up there, assuming the passwords all match. I'm assuming that got copied and pasted correctly. Yeah. Right, so I got it wrong there, which is right. Also, hi, Asad. I know these things make coding more accessible, but you guys are saints to have the patience. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's great. We love working on uh, coding stuff. We love chatting oh, with yeah. you know, all users, yeah. right? We, uh, especially Joey before- Joey also right? knows that literally my favorite thing to do is write sample code for people on the forum. Yeah, um, I actually keep a giant document of every sample code that I write on the forum, and eventually I'm going to take them all and do something with them. Um, yeah, and I mean, I I taught uh, intro to programming classes for three years in uh, college is after I took the intro to programming class the quarter <laughs> before. It's it's a lot of fun. We we uh, self selected into this uh, team. It's true. It's true. Yeah, I taught um, a game on making your own. Or sorry, I taught a course so, on making your own two D game engine. You, you, I, I can barely hear you, but I'm pretty sure you no. said you taught a course on game uh, making. Game, uh, game engines. Game engines. Yeah. Ah. We were chatting about that before, and how it was uh, you wanted to port some of that over, and then a fun time doing that. <laughs> uh, wait a second. What time is it? Um, it's 1:55 now. I think he made it in time. He, he was that. here before that. You know, he's okay. he doesn't have to. Yeah. So yeah. for what Joey is referencing. Um, we have a number of things on this forum that I mean on this uh, live stream that if you do, you have to put a quarter in a jar. Um, and eventually we're going to use all of those quarters and get a puppy for the team. It's going to be named Tapioca. Yeah, what's the pup data about right now? One second. Yeah, go ahead and figure that out. Uh, right. OK, and I mean what once you know how to program, doing block programming definitely takes some patience. I mean, I, I could oh, probably uh, get away with it a little faster, but it is nice having all the APIs just available right there to drag in. And it does make some things feel fast, uh, just the same, or at least easier to digest. Yeah, like it was, it, it's, it's been a weird trajectory for me specifically on that point, because when I first started doing this live stream, 
um, I was like, oh my gosh, blocks programming is such a pain. And now I like it. I like do it even if I'm making an arcade game that like I know nobody's going to look at the code because I'm just used to it maybe, but I really like blocks programming. Yeah, it, it, it does also help that we like work on this all the time, a lot of the time at least. Uh, and so, like, when we find something that's really annoying, we can just fix it <laughs> and ship it. So, save some trouble. True. This stream is indeed sometimes about sometimes making code. Yeah. I didn't um, know there was a one about function. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I had well, to add that you. when I stabilized the uh, about function so that, you know, we can still access all of them, even though it was same for day. Um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, a reminder, we have a mini game jam going on right now. So you can find details about that on the forum. And uh, it's hacking theme. So uh, make a game for it. It's fun. Um, and uh, you know, I, as per usual, even though this is kind of an unofficial, we started one, but is now official, I'm going to be giving badges to everyone who participates in this um, thing. So make a game, get a badge, show it off to all of your friends. I have uh, to uh, reread the post, though. Does it include hacking like? A tree down with an axe. Uh, I, I think you can interpret the theme however you want, as long as it's obvious how it relates. Okay. So okay. yeah, I think you could do that one, Joey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Ham 903 is very uh, entertained by the things that we are about. Um, my favorite is still Big Small. Um, which Big Small? There's like three of them. There's like three of them. Yeah. All right. I am Richard. I Richard on the Make Good Form. I am Asana, Hassan on the Make Code Forum. And I'm Joey at J Wonderland on the Make Code Forum. And we will see you guys on Friday. Bye. Thanks, Joey.